Thank you very much from uh, Jeremy Rifkin's talk about the future. I go to some very basic uh, issues relative to transfer for the low-income citizens. Uh, developing world cities, that's where giant opportunities and challenges are. More than 2 billion new inhabitants will live in these cities over the next 40 years. Here we, we are in Leipzig. Many developing world cities are growing one Leipzig per year. My own city of Bogota grows one Leipzig about every three years. So the challenges are enormous. And this uh, different reality in terms of economic development, because even for Bogota, for Colombia, which is not the poorest developing country, it will take us about 100 years growing at very high growth rates, 5 6% to reach today's Germany's income per capita. So it's a different reality. Transport is very peculiar as a problem because different from health or other challenges, the richer we are, we tend to solve almost any problem. But transport, unless we change our model, it gets worse. There is more and more traffic jams as people have more cars. Uh, we cannot propose transport solutions unless we know what kind of a city we want. Because it's very different if what we want is to be like Houston, or rather than if what we want to be is more like Amsterdam. So, and even before that, even before we know what kind of city we want, we have to know how do we want to live, because finally a city is only a means to a way of life. So actually what I will try to tell you today, you who are transport experts, is that maybe this has more to do with politics than with the technology in many, in many instances. And it has, of course, to do with democracy. What is democracy? I mean, in every constitution, the first article in every constitution in the world says that all citizens are equal before the law. This sounds like nice words. However, this is very powerful. If all citizens are equal before the law, for example, a bus with 100 or 150 passengers has a right to 150 more road space than a car with one person. Uh, and uh, in fact, there is, there is a conflict in cities between cars and people for space. There is a conflict for space between bicycles, pedestrians, cars, and public transport. And also there is a conflict for funds in a very low-income country because we invest in a highway, maybe we don't have enough money to do housing or to do hospitals or schools, the same as we invest in a subway, for example. I would say that is the, to show that this is a political issue, it's very easy to solve mobility in any city if we really give priority to public transport in the use of road space, and we give it to exclusive lanes for buses, and it's very low cost and very easy. But of course, it's a huge political challenge. How should we distribute road space? This is not a technical issue. It's a political issue. We can give more space to sidewalks, to bicycles, to cars. It doesn't matter how much space we give to, 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 to cars, it will, we will never solve traffic jams just giving more space. Sidewalks are the most important element of transport infrastructure, and I would say what really makes a difference between advanced and backward cities in terms of transport is quality sidewalks. We find great highways in some very poor African cities where there is not even running water for many, much of the population. And we, have, we find even subways in, the, in some ter terrible cities. But what we do not find is high-quality sidewalks because upper-income citizens who own cars, in my own city, for example, about 22% of homes own cars, uh, have all the political power. And so the majority of people who walk are not respected. And so one symbol of lack of democracy and of, uh, is to have cars parked on sidewalks or where there should be sidewalks. I was actually almost impeached in Bogota when I was getting tens of thousands of cars off the sidewalks. Uh, and people used to tell me then there is enough space for, for cars to park there as well as for people to walk by. And so we had to tell them, look, we tend to think that sidewalks are relatives of streets because they live next to each other. However, 
Sidewalks are not for getting, just for getting from one place to another. Sidewalks are for talking, for playing, for kissing. Sidewalks really are much closer relatives of parks. And to say that sidewalks have enough space to park cars as well as for people to walk by is equivalent to saying that we could turn the main park or the main plaza into an open-air parking lot so long as we leave enough space for people to walk by. So this is just to emphasize that much of these issues are subjective. I cannot prove mathematically that it is better to have a 10-meter wide sidewalk than to have a 2- or 3-meter wide sidewalk. This is something that you feel with your soul, with your heart. Upper-income citizens only want highways and sometimes subways, not because they have the slightest intention of using them, but because they want to put low-income people and their buses underground so they will not take space away from their cars. And so there are huge political conflicts around this. We decided in Bogota not to follow the Japanese agency, JICA Cooperation Agency recommendations to build billions and billions of dollars of elevated highways, but rather to restrict car use and to put uh, bikeways, schools, libraries, housing projects, and such things. And we even started a car-free day, which was approved through a referendum. The first Thursday of every February, no cars in Bogota. Seven million inhabitant city works without cars. And 99.9 .9 of the people goes to work. We have taxis, and of course we have trucks. The idea is that the city works. This is a very fascinating exercise. We also started investing in bikeways. Bikeways are, this is very important means. It can save up to more than 20% of a low-income citizen's income. I would say, today we assume sidewalks are a right, but are protected bicycle ways a right, or are they just a cute architectural feature? I hope that we arrive to a day when, when bikeways are going to be considered a right, unless we believe that only those with access to a motor vehicle have a right to mobility without the risk of getting killed. So this issue of rights is a very interesting thing. We also started to do, besides doing, Bogotá now has more than 500 kilometers of bikeways, and still we need much more. We went from zero to 5% of the population using bicycles, about 350,000 a day, still too little.